Hey guys, this is EC Service Tech, and today what I wanted to go over is the operation of a capillary tube metering device on an old evaporator coil. So this one was actually for an old R22 fan coil, and this has a check valve in it. So this can be run in AC mode and in heat pump mode because of this right here. So now I'm going to go over the refrigerant flow in the evaporator coil and how it's able to bypass around the capillary tubing when the refrigerant's going in the opposite direction in heat mode. So this right here, both capillary tubes, this is capillary tube and this is capillary tube. On this evaporator coil, presently we have the capillary tube system set on this and here is where you have a strainer. And inside the strainer, there is a stainless steel mesh inside and that's the trap I need to bree before it gets into each of these distributor tubes. The distributor tubes dump into the lines that go into the coil, right here, 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 and here. In the case of AC mode, you have the liquid refrigerant coming this direction, and it comes into this T. Then when it goes into this T, the refrigerant can go this way, and it can go this way. The only thing is this one-way valve right here is going to stop the flow, and it's not going to allow it to come this way. So the only way it can go is from this T, it can go that way. It goes through the strainer in order to trap any debris, and then it goes into these distributor tubes where you end up having a restriction that lowers the pressure, lowers the temperature, it, it comes through the capillary tubes. These cap tubes are designed for diameter, inside diameter, as well as length from the manufacturer, and then it comes into the tubing, and then it's able to flash basically into a lower pressure, lower temperature, liquid refrigerant, and 20% uh, flash gas comes through into the uh, liquid lines into the evaporator coil at these four points and then it travels through the evaporator coil and it is absorbing heat. Then it enters the saturated state in the middle of the evaporator coil and then it comes out of the evaporator coil through the tubing here, 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 and here as a superheated vapor and it comes into this tube right here. It's like a header tube. And then all of the tubing is connected, and then it comes into this suction line and heads back to the outdoor condenser or the heat pump. So in an older cap tube heat pump system, you have a one-way valve, and the refrigerant will use the path of least resistance instead of going through these capillary tubes when the refrigerant runs in the opposite direction. So the refrigerant is going to be coming from the compressor as a discharge gas into this suction line, and then it's going to go into this header, and then it's going to go into the coil and it's going to reject heat and it's going to reject enough heat until it turns into the saturated state in the middle of the evaporator coil and then it's going to come out as a condensed liquid. When it comes out as a condensed liquid, it's going to come out here, 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 and here. It's going to come into this header right here and then it's going to choose. Well, either come this way through the large pipe or through the capillary tubes. And it's not going to be able to go through the capillary tubing all right, as easy as it will go through here. So it's going to go this way. It's going to go through this check valve right here, this one-way valve, and it's going to go in this direction. And then it's going to come through here. So there will be pressure heading in this direction so that it will apply force coming back this way. So basically, there's not necessarily any metering happening. Most of the refrigerant is traveling in this direction, and then it's going to be coming through this T and coming back to the outdoor heat pump as a subcooled liquid. So even on some capillary tube systems, they will have a one-way check valve like this. Also, so you know, this evaporator quill had the old piercing type connections on it. So this evaporator quill actually was factory charged, and you can tell by looking at this right here, this process stub here and here, it was factory charged and you would just connect the line set that was pre-charged with refrigerant to the evaporator coil that was pre-charged with refrigerant. You would tighten both fittings together and then that would make a seal with the gasket material All right, and, and also on the liquid line. Now those um, old connectors are actually cut off of this right here, but they're also located in front of the heat pump as well and on the line set as well. Now you can also notice these older systems had smaller tubing. So you might find the liquid line as a 5 16 liquid line or even a quarter inch liquid line instead of a 3 8 where it runs back to the heat pump or the outdoor condenser. This is the old type of piercing connections that you'd find out in front of the heat pump or the condenser 
because it has a service valve. The other end that connects to the evaporator coil would not have the service valve, and it would just look like this. All right, inside here, you would have a valve core as well, so you could check your pressures, but there would be no way to pump down those types of systems. All right, so I just wanted to go over that operation of the refrigerant flow on a cap tube evaporator coil. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.